You have chosen wisely. <laughs> okay, we're back here, Crypto Hulk. Welcome back. Happy Easter to you. Had to have a little fun this morning. Hold on, let me crack open my energy drink. <clears throat> yes. Today is Easter morning. <clears throat> I've decided to do a show by Jove. I planned it out last night. Welcome back. We're going to learn about the exciting world of cryptocurrency. Yes, we are. We're going to see all the connections that no other channel is going to show you. Because they cannot. Yeah, so I'm gonna, we're going to travel the globe. We're going to travel all around the world and see all the connections to Ripple that no other channel can show you. <clears throat> because we're dealing with these other people. They're amateurs, not professional investigators like yours truly. Um, today's show is, today's a holiday. Um, some people choose to celebrate it and remember it. Some don't. That's not my problem. Um, so my show is very Easter centric. If you don't like it, I'm sorry. Just I'm sorry. You don't follow it. That's fine. Um, I'm glad that I, you know, I haven't. I'm going to go to a service today, a church service. I don't go to church haven't regularly attended I kind of went about back in 2006 for about I think a year or so I went to church services but um it's been a while and uh <clears throat> usually on Christmas I'll say something and usually on Easter I'll try to to start the show off, and, and I don't care what religion you are, if you're none at all, that, that's fine, it's not the point. I always have to try to mention something at least, because that's, you know, some people want to know, some people don't, hey, fine. But, um, you know, I know that I wasn't just, or this planet wasn't just created out of, you can't create something intelligent out of nothing, right? I mean, you, you gotta think about that. <laughs> I mean, you got planet Earth, <clears throat> and all the planets turn at the same time of the year, and then comets, some of them come by every 86 years. Like, all this stuff is just coincidence. I mean, is it really a coincidence? Like, everything's just accident, and then when you pass from this planet and your life's over, you just become nothing in your space dust. I mean, I don't believe that. <clears throat> but um, a couple times a year, I'll start to show off, and Easter's one of them. And, <clears throat> you know, God knows I've made all my mistakes at least two or three or four or five times before, you know, I learned. Um, and it's good to know that what I believe is a God out there that believes in us people and wants to help us and um, gives us an opportunity to know that we're not, when we're going to die, we're just not going to go off into the universe of space dust or something like that. That there's some, we have importance and a God allowed himself to take on a human form and die and then come back to life. And uh, which no other religion has gone over anything like that. But um, I'm just glad that somebody out there loves me because man all the stuff i've done i've done some stuff in my life and um and i could be forgiven for that so <clears throat> yeah anyhow i'm grateful for easter and um for second chances and third and fourth and fifth chances luckily some of us can live that long to get some of us don't even get a second chance you just get one but um, anyhow, Easter show, we're going over about four or five crypto articles here. 
We got Rob Bob Evans. Bob Evans. I used to eat at that restaurant when I was a little kid back in the 70s. It was called Bob Evans, but happy Easter, Hulk. Dennis H. <clears throat> Easter Bunny is busy helping Joe. <laughs> Easter. <laughs> Easter Bunny is busy helping Joe find the bathroom. Oh, yes. Then you got John Goodship. Happy Easter, Hulk. Hope you're doing well. You're appreciated. Isaiah Morgan. Welcome to the entry level membership. James Lamarco says, Happy Resurrection Day, Hulkster and family. Bob Evans is still open. Whoa. I remember <clears throat> Bob Evans, my grandma. She died back in 1982, but uh, I remember sometimes we'd go there with my dad and my grandma. That was a long time ago. I don't quite remember the inside of the restaurant, but I remember us going to Bob Bevins a few times. Like, I remember that name, but um, yeah, it was so many years, like decades ago. All righty. I think Bob Evans is kind of like a Denny's or something, or but I still see some of their like bacon or whatever in grocery stores here and there over the years at Bob Evans' place. So one day I'll have to eat there again. R A F Vet, welcome to the entry level membership. <clears throat> then, yeah, we got this other person. I can't read their stuff on there. Can't read their name. We got TK showed up. XR Poseidon. Dan Marrero. Dan Marrero. Rubber Baby. Rubber Band Bibby. And R.A. Garkitcher Coin. Whatever that is. Those people were the first five. Cinco. Cuatro Cinco. Um, four Mexican guys sinking in quicksand, uh, cuatro, cinco. Um, let's see. Not as good as it used to be. So 1970 legend said Bob Evans is not as good as it used to be. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Anytime companies, you know what? Here's what I've noticed. You'll have a company that is really good. People love this and that. Then they decide to go on the stock market. And then... They got to listen to the shareholders. What are shareholders? Shareholders just want money, right? People like you and me, <clears throat> think of your favorite restaurant or store, whatever it might be. Think of it. Or think of a place you just love going to because it's good to hang out. And okay, so I went to one of those places last night, Pink Martini. We go there now and then. And uh, the place is just, it's gorgeous inside. It's like a nightclub. If you get there early, it's a restaurant bar. You get there later, it becomes a nightclub. I'm already gone well before that crowd shows up. <clears throat> I like to go into this place, Pink Martini in the Sacramento area. Oh, my God. The lights and the glamour and the style and the sophistication, the great people work in there the, the food is amazing it's stellar the food is stellar <clears throat> now if they decide to go public on the stock market which they won't but then they've got to kiss up to the majority shareholders and then because and those people they want profits next week today tomorrow today tomorrow that's how it goes in the sales world today tomorrow <clears throat> And then the quality starts going down. So I understand, I guess, what good old Bob Evans used to be good, but nowadays they just kind of, I don't know, sucks. It's not like Crypto Hulk Show. We get better as the show goes on. Yes, we do. Who do we got here? Just some comments. We're going to start the show here real quick. Got one here in Carolina where I'm visiting, says Michael Gilbert. <laughs> 
Clyde B, is it safe to get XRP now or should we wait? I mean, get it now. Hardware wallet, that stuff. Put it in a Faraday bag. Figure out which hardware wallet's best for you. I personally use um, the Nano Ledger X. So but you could use whatever, Decent or whatever wallets. Do your research on it. Bob Evans here in Ellicott City is very good. Okay. <clears throat> I'm kind of waiting to get more XRP. I'm, I'm kind of waiting. Like, I'm seeing <clears throat> a lot of market FUD, people trying to scare other people out of XRP. So I'm kind of waiting like for XRP to drop in price. So newer people now, okay, my name is CryptoHawk. I'm not a financial advisor. Don't do anything that I say or do. Don't do anything. Just watch the show. Uh, Admire how brilliant it is, but uh, laugh at the jokes or whatever kind of thing going on, but um, don't do anything I say. So what I'm going to do, don't do what I do, is <clears throat> I'm watching close and I notice a lot of these minions out there. They do what they're told and they're told, make XRP look bad. So I'm waiting for these people to dump the price again. Maybe I can start buying again at 15 cents like I did before. Then, more than likely, I'm dropping minimum five grand into XRP. If it goes down to 15 cents again, I might be putting in five or 10,000 bucks, okay? I have not invested in XRP for four years. I haven't invested in anything for four years. So, <clears throat> um... I got in at 15 cents. I think when it hit about 30 cents XRP, I'm like, oh, too rich for me. I'm done. So that's what I'm going to do again. Like, if it hits like 15 cents, something something's going to come out. Oh, XRP manipulated the price. Da, 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 whatever. They're going to come up with whatever kind of dumb shit, dump this price so the banks can come in and buy it up. I'm like, I'm just calling this fucking shit, right? And when it happens, you'd be like, now, how does this dude call these shots? Because I already know, well, look, think like a criminal, okay? Think like a fucking criminal. And that's how I do this shit. It's that easy. Most of my career, I worked in law enforcement, uh, court system, and the military. So <clears throat> that's just my life experience. I was a teacher. I taught little kids in fifth grade and in high school. Um, Worked in some group homes where kids were treated pretty bad by their parents. Not pretty bad, like fucked up by their parents. Um, so I'm used to dealing with difficult people most of my career. If somebody says, oh, I'm just like you, Crypto Hulk. I work at McDonald's. I got to deal with difficult people. Yes, you deal with the shitheads of life, right? Um, but what I feel is they're going to try to dump XRP price. And that's when I come in. I get one last chance. It's kind of like you crack that whip or something or that the tail of the drag, whatever it is, and it comes around again and, and it gets you. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to come in second time right before this thing takes off and just scoop up five to ten grand worth of XRP. <clears throat> I'm waiting for it. Andy says that would be a dream come true if it goes to 15 cents. I'm planning on some bad shit happening and the the price will dump on XRP with whether that's um world war uh, whatever it might be hack some bad news power outages I mean just imagine all kinds of shit <clears throat> they're going to try to dump these prices cuz these banks are going to come in and jump in I mean, look at what just happened. You've got Ripple working with Uphold, and they just allowed institutional investors to come in. You see? So these people, now hold on there, buddy. I'm getting a text. Oh, that's cool. An Easter picture. Oh, happy Easter, Hulk. Oh, that's a totally cool picture. 
I'm going to save that one. I'll show you guys later. It shows a picture of Hulk and probably She-Hulk or something. <clears throat> but um, <clears throat> just expect these stupid assholes to come in and buy up all the XRP. <clears throat> they're going to use some kind of disaster or whatever the fuck they're going to use, all right? Just thinking like a criminal, not don't have no crystal ball or nothing, just. And, and that's why Ripple opened up with Uphold to allow institutional investors. That's what they're going to do. More and more of these institutional investors to come in on different websites and stuff. And they're going to be waiting, the price dump, and then boom, they come in. They're not going to be paying no damn near dollar for each XRP. Think about it. They're going to be buying millions. Because remember, we got... 100 billion total XRP, 50 billion's been released. Of that 50 billion, I don't know what's free floating around, liquidity, but they're coming in. Uphold just demonstrated that for institutional investors. They're coming in to the public market and they're going to compete with you and me. And guess what? They're not going to compete with you and me because they're going to outbuy us. And when they buy us, they're going to just dump. Billions, just like that. Boom, done. XRP goes 15 cents to 1,500 bucks or whatever the shit is, okay? <clears throat> That's how this is going to, going to work. You can see with the Uphold example, these other exchanges are going to do the same thing. They're going to start allowing institutionals. And institutionals are going to sit there and wait. They're not going to be buying at 65 cents. No, they're going to be buying at 15 cents or 5 cents, okay? I don't think we'll go back to the day when XRP is 0. 0.0003 cents. But they're going to dump this price, whatever they got to do, recession, war, uh, whatever. You know the cargo ship that hit Baltimore, the bridge and stuff? They're claiming that that was, uh, you know, a little terrorist. And I got to say it like that so the thing doesn't pick up on it. Oh, yeah. This is the first one, man. <clears throat> Come on, man. That's what Joe Biden says. Um, institutional investors might create FOMO. So I, I want you to think. Uphold's been there from day one. They got some kind of connection. If XRP is all that bad, why are they going to open up? Why do they continue to sell it when everybody else shut down? Why are they allowing institutions? Why is Ripple working through Uphold? You know they are. Why are they working through Uphold? The next question is, why is Uphold doing this thing with institutional investors? Shouldn't they have some kind of different platform or whatever? I don't know. Maybe a law gets passed later and Uphold shuts down retail and is strictly wholesale. Just letting you know what's coming. Just letting you know what's coming. <clears throat> so they shut down Uphold to retail because it'll be deemed, XRP will be deemed whatever you want to call it financially important in the United States, systemically important, whatever. Okay. Only certain banks or institutions in the future are going to be allowed to buy XRP. XRP is not designed for you and me. Okay. I don't give a shit about no XRP Las Vegas or none. Ripple <coughs> is not concerned with retail. Do you get this? Somehow along the way, you're you're in the pursuit of trying to be cool. You want to go to XRP Las Vegas. Sad. Do you not understand? XRP is not designed for us. Ripple is set up for banks and countries, not you. Why are you going to be the cheerleader and shake your little pom-poms? And if you're a girl, you got your own pom-poms plus your pom-poms. <clears throat> Why the fuck you want to go to Las Vegas and do that dumb shit? <clears throat> it's not even designed for you. That's what's hilarious. They don't care about you and me. 
you not get this? It's a wholesale, not retail. Stellar is the retail. If anything, you should have go go to Jed McCaleb and go knock on the door of the Stellar Development Foundation. Say, hey, can we party at your place today, Jed? Because Crypto Hawk's telling us XRP and Ripple and shit is designed for wholesale. He'll be like, that's right. So Ripple wants nothing to do with you. But, but why is Brad going to be there going all e? Well, because it's a publicity stunt, and they're trying to make people think that Ripple's a company, but it's really our country. Oh, but Jed would say, but if you'd watch Crypto Hulk, you would know that, wouldn't you? Yes. Okay. Dolph Jr. I love XRP, but do you think XTC is the real sleeping giant? They all work together, Dolph. Keep watching the channel. They all work together. <clears throat> and then these people <clears throat> that are going to have XRP Las Vegas, do they know that about Ripple Russia? No. They know about Ripple China in 2013. Do they know about that? No. What about Ripple Indonesia, 2015? Do they know about that? Uh, no. Okay, well, certainly they know who Ripple's first customer was. No, they don't know that. Okay, the second customer. No, they don't know that either. Oh, got it. So they don't know anything. Okay. <laughs> Truly sad. <clears throat> Joel Park says he is risen. Here we go. Indonesia. My Jim. Let's look up Indonesia. Something that no other channel knows about, and that's okay. That's why Crypto Hulk's here. To do the research and put in the work to show you. <sighs> Let's go right here. Indonesia will require crypto products to pass through regulatory sandbox or be deemed illegal. You know, why is Indonesia... The tiny little country, I know there's a lot of people there, 250 million. It's close to the same size as the United States, <clears throat> but it's a tiny little country. Why is Indonesia having a crypto sandbox, but not the United States? Just wondering, why did Ripple 10 years ago, just about, why did Ripple 10 years ago go to Indonesia, hook them up, hook up their banking system with crypto, and why is Indonesia ready to start a crypto sandbox and not the United States? Just, I'm, I'm trying to, may oh, I know, <clears throat> how about the people at Ripple Las Vegas? Maybe they can answer that question. Huh? Can they even find the evidence? Oh, by the way, here's your evidence. This is just part of it. If you look through Crypto Hulk, back February, March, April of 2023 and watch his full-length shows, not his little one- to two-minute videos, then you'll see all the evidence for everything. Because these other channels, they can't do shit. They can sell you dumb shit and try to get you fake hype, and that's about it. All righty, then. Peckerhead comes back. Sorry, Hulk, haven't been able to donate lately. When I have more, I'll send more. But Peckerhead, that's a very interesting name. And Peckerhead has a friend. His friend's like, and I'm with Peckerhead. <clears throat> um, well, what do we have here? Let's go to the 42-second mark. I have a video here that's 2 minutes, 23 seconds long. It's about Indonesia. And at the 42 second mark, I have what no other channel has. And it's a <clears throat> proof here that there's something called Ripple Indonesia 2015. Ripple Salusi Technology. Yes. 
There's something called, okay, yeah. I just wanted to show you that because no other channel has it, except me, because <clears throat> nobody else wants to do any research. They just want to make quick, short, 12-minute shows, sprinkle on the news, tell you nothing, and get sponsors, and that's that's what they want to do. <clears throat> and hold little Ripple Las Vegas things that mean nothing at all. Indonesia Financial Services Authority takes over regulation of the crypto industry <clears throat> from the Commodities Agency. Are you hearing this? Oh, so cryptos are not commodities? No. Crypto firms will have to pass an evaluation in a sandbox environment by the new regulator before they are granted approval to operate in the country. <clears throat> now, isn't this interesting? <clears throat> You've got Ripple, a United States company, goes to Indonesia in 2014-15, hooks them all up with crypto, and nowadays, <clears throat> Indonesia is getting set up for crypto regulations. What about America? Why not? See, maybe we can ask Ripple Las Vegas if they have answers for this. Can they even find the articles? No. Truly sad. Truly sad. <clears throat> All right. This aligns with our spirit at OJK, particularly in consumer protection and education. Hassan Fauzi the regulator's head of supervision for financial technology, digital financial asset department, uh, at, said at a media briefing on Tuesday, we expect our regulatory mechanism to directly impact the prevention of fraud investments. Firms that offer services in the country without being evaluated in a sandbox will be considered operating illegally. <clears throat> a regulatory sandbox serves <coughs> serves as a testing and innovation development space to evaluate products and make sure that they're safe and reliable. And I think that's it. The regulatory sandbox allows crypto businesses to get used to the regulations and supervision enforced. Well, there we go. We're gonna see. Okay, look. We'll, we'll get into that other. We'll get into this next subject later. I'm, I don't want to jump on the next article, so I'm gonna click out of these two. Now we're gonna get into what I wanted to say. Here's the next article. It's talking about crypto regulations globally. Let's look at this right here. I want to show you something there, buddy. We got Mark Swindell. He's like, hey, Hulk. All right. <clears throat> Next title. <clears throat> Fewer than 30% of the jurisdictions in the world globally have started regulating crypto. So there's a couple things we need to be rich. Global crypto regulations. Next one, global tokenization. When you got those two things, it's it's on. So right now, you know, I'm not we're not we're not rich tomorrow. Next week. Possibly next year early. Okay. Look here, we got 30% of the world with global regulations with crypto. So that kind of tells you where we're at. Um, we got some ways to go. Let's look at this article. This is FATF. The finding term, a call to action, <clears throat> emerged from a report that explored which jurisdictions have adhered to FATFA recommendations. That's FATF, Financial Action Task Force. Now listen to what we got going on here. A lack of regulation creates significant loopholes for both criminals, Sam Bankman-Fried and 
pretty much all the American government officials and terrorists to exploit and is a call to action that we need countries to take this problem seriously. FATFA published a new report evaluating jurisdictions on their crypto regulations. After a 12-month process, 39 members and 20 jurisdictions that aren't members, fewer than 30% around the globe had started regulating the crypto sector. So, now this is as of June of 2023, so almost a year ago, Financial Action Task Force President Raja Kumar told Coindesk in an interview from Singapore, notice how all these things are happening outside of the United States. Okay, <clears throat> brand new people that are skeptical in this now, why is it, why is the country of Singapore giving interviews and stuff and all around the world, but the United States, there's nothing. I just want you to notice this. Just want you to notice. <clears throat> that low level <clears throat> of attention, meaning crypto regulation at 30% of the globe, warrants a call to action, says Raja Kumar. The statistic was detailed in a progress report made on Thursday shared with Coindesk, which explored how dozens of jurisdictions have adhered to FATFA recommendations. Um, they did a report, a study, why countries... How many countries have crypto regs? Why they do, why they don't, all these things. We're talking about how to license or register crypto firms. The FATFA recommendations are not mandatory, but non-abiding jurisdictions could face global isolation through their... <clears throat> okay, so what we got here... <clears throat> Talk about terrorist funding with crypto. FATFA's call to action. <clears throat> the, the boss of the Global Money Laundering and Terrorist Watch Group said it was the first such report addressing the concern that a lack of regulation. Look, I want you to see what's going on now. This is, um, this is important. You got the Financial Action Task Force. This is a global entity. They cannot force any country to do anything, but they can sure make your life miserable. Kind of like the old girlfriend you kind of fucked over. Remember, they, they can sure make your life miserable. Trust me. Um, Crypto Hulk, uh, what do you mean? I'm not getting into it. <clears throat> Remember. Here's a, here's a little lesson for the youngsters that might be watching. We don't have many of them. If it's free, you don't want it, okay? Trust me, it ends up costing you much more. It's better just to pay. I wouldn't know anything about that personally, but it's just better to pay, all right? Free is not good. <clears throat> um, what we got going on here is the Financial Action Task Force is a global entity, and they're trying to study on why countries what's the problem why are they not having crypto regs this is what we need one of the two things remember global crypto regulations that's how we become rich <clears throat> the financial action task force is now out there trying to figure out why is this taking so long okay is meant <clears throat> The Financial Action Task Force, <coughs> they did a report, <coughs> and it's meant to bring global attention to the issue as a constructive effort to inform regulators and the private sector about what's going on with the group standards. So this is the first time I've really seen, seen something like this. 
you have a global body called the Financial Action Task Force. They did a study, and they're trying to figure out why is this taking so long, okay? <clears throat> um, they're talking about Korea and there's some theft of crypto. Compliance levels of jurisdictions. <coughs> Look here. The Financial Action Task Force has been urging jurisdictions to fully implement its recommendations for some time now. The table in the report rates each jurisdiction as compliant, largely compliant, partially compliant, or non-compliant. What I'm going to show, what we're seeing here now, look, is countries that don't have adequate crypto regs, we kind of know who those are going to be, right? Pretty much the enemies of the United States. <clears throat> so depending, depending on how United States friendly a country is, they're going to adopt rules or they're not, and then they're going to be punished. Um, Let me see if they have a list. They're not showing the list unless maybe I click. I click on some. But they're saying North Korea is blacklisted. Of course, we know that Cuba, Russia, stuff like that. <clears throat> so what they're kind of doing is this, the Financial Action Task Force <clears throat> is made up of probably like the G20, like the top 20 countries in the world, and they're rating each country on how crypto compliant they are, and if they don't start to get crypto rules, then the Financial Action Task Force will start to destroy that country's credit rating, which is really going to be messed up for that country. <clears throat> so it's kind of like being volu not volunteered, but voluntold that you're going to have crypto regs. That's what I'm seeing with the Financial Action Task Force. There's, now it's kind of like not an option. They're kind of telling us in this article, hey, countries that don't get crypto regs, you're going to be punished financially, okay? They can't do anything to you legally. They can't force a country to do whatever. Oh, but they can drop your credit rating. They can do different things to you. Um, now, let me tell you some. Some of these countries might be, like, I'm just letting you know. I've already told you from the beginning. <clears throat> I told you four years ago, you're going to have some countries that are rogue nations and wrote these rogue nations not that they're bad it's just they're like fuck it we're not gonna have crypto regs we're not gonna even deal with that dumb shit those are some of the countries where people might go live because you could probably go there live since the country doesn't have crypto regs you can do whatever you want with crypto because they don't care <clears throat> so i've already told you before i might consider moving to a a rogue country because it might be a country where they don't tax crypto. They don't do shit with crypto. You can do like whatever you want. So I'm just putting that out there. That's why I read this article because of uh, that. Like, cause there's two things in this article. Number one, they're cracking down. Financial action task force is cracking down <clears throat> and making sure all these countries come up with crypto regs. And at the same time, one of these countries might end up being a rogue nation, and maybe that's where you want to go. You know, they don't have crypto laws, and they don't respect, they don't even care. Like, they're just kind of like, whatever. You know, it might be one of those kind of countries. So, just thought I'd put that one out there. Let me check the comments. We'll go to the next article here. Oh. 
Well, let me go straight into this one. No need for a break. So we're talking about Financial Action Task Force getting in and controlling the whole world, basically. Look, we got here Ripple. <clears throat> well, what a coincidence. Look at this next article. This article's only dated five years ago. Tron Weekly. Isn't it interesting how it's called Tron Weekly and Tron's all, Tron Crypto's all kinds of caught up in court cases for fraud. My, how time changes, huh? What do we got here? What's the title? We got June 2019. Five years ago, everybody. <clears throat> Ripple joins forces with coin firm. That's C-O-I-N and then capital F-I-R-M, one word, coin firm to make XRP, F-A-T-F, rules amenable. What is this, Crypto Hulk? Well, from five years ago, we're talking about FATFA, F-A-T-F, right? The global body. Well, what was going on five years ago with Ripple, with FATFA? According to the report from Forbes, the San Francisco-based crypto company called Ripple has joined forces with anti-money laundering solution provider Confirm. <coughs> the reason behind this partnership is to allow Ripple's default currency, default currency, it's not a security, fake trial, hashtag Ripple fake trial, hashtag Crypto Hall shows us all we need to know. Um, they're calling Ripple here a default currency, by the way, the XRP. Become, Ripple becomes compliant with the new FATF rules. Well, wait a second here, Crypto Hulk. The Bank for International Settlements, the global bank, every transaction passes through that bank. <clears throat> They're a Ripple partner. Crypto Hulk, isn't the Digital Dollar Project Ripple partner of? Yeah. What about the Digital Pound Project, Crypto Hulk? Isn't Ripple a part of that? Yeah. What about the Digital Euro Project, Crypto Hulk? Is it Ripple a part of that? Yeah. <clears throat> Based in London, England, the company called Confirm is a startup company that is quickly making its mark as a technology technological solutions provider. What is Coinfirm? <clears throat> Launched by anti-money laundering experts. I'm going to tell you what Confirm is. Confirm is a branch of M, the letter M. I'm not going to say I, and I'm not going to say the number six. <laughs> now, if you watch the movie with Tom Cruise, that's what we're dealing with here. Mission Impossible 6. <clears throat> okay. It's a startup all of a sudden, right? This comes out of England. Why isn't it coming out of America? Got to keep that on the DL, okay? <clears throat> the chief executive, Powell Kuskowski, <clears throat> is a renowned anti-money laundering expert whose CV boasts mega organizations like the Royal Bank of Scotland, Ripple Partner, <clears throat> where he operated in the capacity of the Chief Manager of Global Stuff, Poland's Compliance Association. The latest Ripple Partner confirms network uses large-scale data analysis and trademarked algorithms. <clears throat> I want you to notice some. 2015 was the Ripple Settlement Agreement with the United States government. In that 2015 Ripple Settlement, it was a court hearing where the United States government designated Ripple, the company, as a money service business, <coughs> and the United States court system government 
let me repeat, the United States court system, the United States court system had declared Ripple's XRP money, not a security. No, it wasn't considered a commodity. Let me repeat, in 2015, the United States government, which is the court system, the United States Attorney's Office, the Treasury, FinCEN, which is the Treasury Police, the Department of Justice, I could name more agencies, all determined that Ripple was a money service business and the XRP was considered money. Nowhere in this is the word security. You're all being faked. <clears throat> These other channels you're watching, and they're holding Ripple Las Vegas. They have no fucking clue. They're like, oh, Judge Sarah Torres said it's not a security, so that means it has regulatory clarity. These people are so fucking stupid. They have no idea what they're doing, all right? <sighs> Truly sad. <clears throat> all right. <clears throat> now, that was 2015. Four years later, Ripple joins an anti-money. See, Ripple got busted in 2015 for violating anti-money laundering laws because they didn't have a proper anti-money laundering program in place. What did Ripple do? They got an anti-money laundering program in place, and all the problems went. Bye bye. Okay, not a big deal. <clears throat> the government knew in 2015, only nine years ago. The government knows what Ripple is. It's a money service business. So it's not a big deal. And they they move money around. Okay, got it. There's nothing to do with securities. <clears throat> this whole court case is fake. <clears throat> These other channels have no idea that this court case is fake. All right, truly sad. It was already Ripple's, it's already determined what it is. So Ripple, in four years later, joins this company called Confirm because they deal with anti-money laundering. Guess what? <clears throat> then Ripple is now under the Financial Action Task Force um, relation, relationship. Bitcoin's not there. Guess what? Ethereum's not there either. I know, I know it sucks. I know, I know. Um, is chain link there? No, I'm sorry. No, no. Uh, what about Tron? No, no, no. Tron's in court, in criminal court, actually. <clears throat> and Justin Sutton will probably have to get the hell out of town because the cops are going to be coming after him. <clears throat> so. <clears throat> That's what's going on with Financial Action Task Force. Oh, looky here. Since we're still dealing with the Financial Action Task Force, let's look at the country of Turkey. Because Turkey is a Ripple partner, by the way, for about the past 10 years. Go ask, <clears throat> go ask the Ripple Las Vegas people. They have evidence of Turkey being a Ripple partner and joining Financial Action Task Force. Oh, oh, that's right. They won't have that evidence. Never mind. Don't do that. <clears throat> oh, somebody's getting comments blocked. Let's see. Okay, the Cannabis Podcast you got to stop making terrorist comments on the channel. So I had to report you. You're probably not going to get your channel back. Sorry. That, that shit happens. But you'll make it through. You'll make it. Go on another channel to talk about your stupid fucked up comments. I wish you luck there, dummy. Um, let's see here. Brosef. Ray John Hulk, <clears throat> first time I caught a live from work at break time. Oh, Dennis H. I think it's the guy's at work and he's on a break. He watches crypto. <laughs> That's funny. Um, Dennis H. 
I think Congress has been slow walking the crypto laws. You think? Bitcoin came out 2009. Here we are, what? 14 years later, 15 years later, no crypto laws yet. You think we're slow walking or are we crawling? How about slow crawling? <clears throat> I think Congress has been slow walking crypto laws to allow three letter agencies to wrap up projects. Where did you get that at? You must have got that from Crypto Hall. Here's what I've said from day one. Like, I, I just knew this. after It only took me two months or whatever to learn about crypto. I watched how many, how many videos a day? 10 videos or something a day for two months straight. And then I started a crypto show. But I knew right away it wasn't Ethereum, it wasn't Bitcoin. That shit was like whack. Uh, <clears throat> and then I was like, oh, Ripple. Like I, I knew this right away after two months of watching videos. Ripple's a part of the government. Now, I didn't have all the evidence I got now, but I knew it. And I'm like, Ripple's like not a company. It's part of the government. And there's an agency, which I didn't know at the time, but then I got the evidence that the national, not going to say security, not going to say agency, was on a Ripple page as a team member. Somebody got fired for that one. <clears throat> but somebody at Ripple put down the early team members, some of them being the, oh, New York Federal Reserve, Apple, Google, Twitter. And um, the spy agency. And then that page was just mysteriously disappeared, except I got it. No other channel has, by the way. <clears throat> but yeah. So, Dennis, you're correct. Uh, there are three letter agencies, one that I know of for certain that I can confirm, that are working with Ripple. And then I then somebody sent me proof that Ripple's a government contractor and a subcontractor. Then I'm like, oh damn, two two solid pieces of evidence. And then guess what? <clears throat> Everybody at Ripple, they're not they're contractors. They're not employees of Ripple. That's what's funny. None of those people there are Ripple employees. <clears throat> they're like some kind of contractor. Yes, sir. -y. Sparky Ape. Happy Easter Ripple family. Then you got Yap Tony. Thank you very much for that donation channel. Market. Okay, so we got the Ripple joining Financial Action Task Force. Here's the Turkey article. I'm gonna go over there. I think I showed it. Let me show this again. Yeah. Turkey. <clears throat> this article is from not seeing a date. Oh, here we are, five months ago. <clears throat> so it, it's saying five months ago. So probably around uh, October of last year. Here's the title. <clears throat> Turkey intensifies crypto regulations in a bid to exit FAFSA's gray list. What do we? So we just got done talking about 30% of the world has crypto regulations. <clears throat> then we're talking about FATFA in there and how Ripple then joined FATFA not, five years ago. Now we're talking about Turkey having crypto regulations five months ago. And guess what? Turkey wants to move from the Financial Action Task Force gray list to the green list, okay? <clears throat> There's the Turkish flag in this picture. <clears throat> Notice you have a Muslim country and 
According to the report from Reuters, the FATF established by the G7. So I was wrong. <clears throat> FATFA was started by the top seven countries in the world. Okay. It was, and their goal is to, quote, safeguard the integrity of the global financial system. They placed Turkey on this watch list in 2021. <clears throat> Turkey has since worked diligently to move up to international standards. So what we got going on, everybody, look. The top seven countries of the world, they made something called Financial Action Task Force. And their goal <clears throat> is to bring on the crypto revolution to the globe, okay? That's what's up. I'm going to leave this article at that. Turkey not only aims <clears throat> to satisfy the FATF requirements, <clears throat> but also to enhance the overall safety and integrity of Turkey's financial landscape. <clears throat> so there's that. And lastly, Turkey just released their own crypto. Let me show you this. <clears throat> Happy Easter Hulk from Robert. Thank you, Robert. Look what I just sent you there. <clears throat> uh, this happened 10 days ago, everybody. Turkey released the first phase digital lira. It was a project evaluation report. <clears throat> <clears throat> the digital Turkish lira is set to be intermediated CBDC with self-sovereign identity and offline transfers. <clears throat> so I want to see, I want you to see this. <clears throat> Five months ago, Turkey joins FATFA and they get global recognition. February 20th, 2024, okay, about a month ago, roughly, Turkey releases its digital money. Lastly, what I want to show you is Ripple's been a Turkey partner, Ripple and Turkey, for like the past 10 years. Look at this. <clears throat> right there. <clears throat> Go to the 34 second mark. Watch the whole video later. But right now, go to the 34 second mark. What do you see? Ripple Turkey. Maybe you could go to Ripple Las Vegas and ask them about Ripple Turkey. And if they could talk about it for you and help you explain where Ripple comes in. They'll be like, well, I didn't know there was a Ripple Turkey. Oh, that's right. Because <clears throat> you got to watch Crypto Hulk. Not your own show. Your own show doesn't show us this stuff. It just sells us stuff. Your show promotes dumb shit, and you have scammy shit for us to buy. Okay, got it. <clears throat> so there's the evidence with that. How are we doing as far as, oh, damn, almost an hour. Okay. Okay, I'm going to wrap. I got one more article. <clears throat> if you go to my community page, I gave you the link right there. Let me see what happens when I click that link. Okay, perfect. Click on the link that I just showed you. 
<clears throat> and go to the first one. It shows 11 hours ago. Click on the read more. We're going to go over to something real quick. I want to show you how important Singapore is. <clears throat> no other channel is going to have this evidence either. Um, I posted last night that this is the shares of the XY findables. Okay, so there was a company called <coughs> XY findables. Um, I invested in them about six years ago. Um, they sold little gadgets that would give off like a Bluetooth kind of a thing and you could track stuff, okay? The uh, company has grown over the past six years that I've joined. It's been around longer than six years. I've joined six years ago. Maybe it was seven. I think six. <clears throat> Maybe even seven. Um, <clears throat> but they were called XY Findables. I paid a dollar per share and I bought 500 shares in the company. <clears throat> I don't know if it was a legal transaction or not. Um, because... I bought it directly from the company. So it was a security sale, actually. <laughs> Oopsie. Sorry, Gary. So unbeknownst to me, <clears throat> um, I bought 500 shares in this company called XY Findables. <clears throat> I didn't know I had to go through a dealer broker to buy securities. And guess what? I own the security certificate. Yes. Not a investment company. Like normally you go to BlackRock and you buy shares of General Motors. That somebody, some custodian is holding that stock certificate, right? When I bought the XY Findables, I own it. That's very fucking cool. <clears throat> now, the company's called... Um, um, X, they changed their name. I forgot the name of what they're called now. XYO, that's their name, XYO. I, mean, like I told you, it was a lot of years ago, like seven years ago, I bought this shit. <clears throat> I bought it, I put it in my uh, email mailbox, and I forgot about it. So I got an email from them t the other day, and it talks about XY joins digital assets. Da, 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 and then it talks about XYO, Digital Assets Association. So what they tried to do a couple years ago is to get me <clears throat> to convert my um, stock that I bought illegally <laughs> in their company and convert it into crypto. And I'm like, no, I'm not going to. Because um, I can always do it later if I want. I want to know what's going to happen to this company's stock. So I know it's kind of like Ethereum based. I've seen the company grow over the years. <clears throat> I'm hoping like a huge, like a huge, that's U-G-E, Donald Trump huge. I'm hoping that some big ass company comes in and buy it. And the stocks go from like, I think the stocks now are worth seven to 10 bucks a piece. And I bought them for a dollar. I'm hoping they go to like, I don't know, 100 bucks, 500 bucks or something, whatever, 1,000. I have no idea. But if not, I don't care. I only put in 500 bucks. <clears throat> but what's interesting, this is what I wanted to show you. Um, let me read the portion here. Exciting news alert. XYO has just joined the elite ranks of the Singapore based Digital Asset Association. Do you understand this? <clears throat> we have a crypto company out of San Diego being proud of the fact that they're an elite rank of the Singapore Digital Assets Association. I want you to think about this. Why? Why not in America? <clears throat> Singapore already has a digital assets association. Oh, it's a big deal, but not in America. Now, I want to show you something no other channel has, okay? 
That's why you get mem- I'm starting up tomorrow. Memberships are going to be starting tomorrow again. I took a little bit of a break to allow the people that don't have memberships, but now we're going back like every other show is going to start being a members only show. And that's the show. <clears throat> so I have hoped you enjoyed this little break. But look what I'm showing you right here. No other channel. Go to the 27 second mark. 27 second mark. What do you see? <clears throat> you see a Ripple logo. And you see someone says Ripple Singapore. Whoa. Gold and silver in your wallet. Ripple had what they call a Ripple wallet. Look here. Ripple Gateway Limited. Established when? Shows right there. 2013. It's in Singapore. They had gold, silver, stocks, bonds, derivatives, all of this. They had a debit card. All of this done. There's the date right there, 2013. I didn't make it up on Photoshop. You've heard other channels talk about the four Satoshis. I list them right here. They're they're right there in this article. Damn, Crypto Hulk. This channel's just... Nothing amazing. I can't cuss right now because I'll be going to an Easter service here, so I have to watch the language. I can't be in church and bust out with some four-letter word. Not going to look good. <laughs> People be like, what the hell's wrong with that dude? But uh, look here, Ripple Singapore. So <clears throat> I just wanted to show you that. No other channel is going to have that. People in they're going to Ripple Las Vegas. They have no fucking clue. It's truly sad. The blind leading the blind. That's biblical, by the way. Uh, diabetes. Thanks, Hulk. Glad to catch another great one. You got Toter Gramada back again. Thank you for that. Dude's been on the channel for years. One day. <clears throat> but okay, so real quick to wrap it up, XY Findables becomes XYO. I bought it illegally. Um, it was second party sales. So it's from the company to me. <laughs> Stocks are not supposed to happen like that. <clears throat> That's okay. Um, I won't tell nobody if you don't. We'll just keep it a secret between us two. I won't tell Gary Ginsler. Um, <clears throat> so why is it, though, that this company, XY, goes to Singapore to kind of launch their business globally? It's a San Diego company. That's one question. <clears throat> the next question, why in 2013 does Ripple go to Singapore, hook them up with gold? They, they had literally real gold and silver in a vault. Stocks, bonds, derivatives, a debit card where you can spend money and all that shit. Why did Ripple go there 11 years ago and not the United States? Do you know? I don't know either. But it's to start crypto over in China area. That's what we do know. Why don't I, – I know what. Why don't you ask the people that are hosting Ripple – I mean uh, Ripple Las Vegas <clears throat> if they could explain all this. And find the articles of proof that I have and so they can talk to you intelligently on why Ripple's doing this. Oh, that's right. They can't do that. Okay. Got it. Fucking <sighs> amateurs. All over the internet. Got amateurs. <laughs> All righty then. <clears throat> We've got Eric Goldsmith. Eric, thank you very much. Stacy says, Happy Easter too. I am not going to say crypto, not going to say oh, you gotta keep those. Don't man, don't say those two words together. It's gonna get you caught up there, buddy. <coughs> J316. <laughs> Member for 14 months at the 2024 crypto explosion membership level, mind you. <coughs> he is risen. John 3, 16, accept and believe. Happy Easter, everyone. 19, oh my God, comes right in at the end. 
1970 legend, the recruitment office is open for a short period of time on Easter. <laughs> Dang, Crypto Hulk, you got a seven day a week, 24 seven operation going over there at the recruitment office. Well, you know, they come and go. <laughs> <clears throat> they come and go as they want here in the recruitment office. I kind of let those, <clears throat> there's a few guys that uh, I kind of let them just, I give them the key. <clears throat> it's like this card and they just walk up to the door and swipe it and it unlocks the door and they can open the recruitment office. And then I got to get ready. I got to change uh, into some, I don't even have like church clothes. That's going to be kind of weird. Like I haven't been in church for like, God, since 2008 or something. And that was just, I just went for a little bit. But yeah, it's been, I don't know, too many years, 15 or... Anyway, I don't know what I'm going to wear. I really don't have an idea. Um, shorts, I don't have really... I'm wearing shorts to church. I might have some dress shorts, maybe. I don't even know. I just wear workout shit all the time, so... It's going to be interesting when I wear Easter Sunday. Everybody's wearing suits and shit. And I'll be coming in with a fucking coat shirt on and a pair of shorts. I don't know. But whatever, you know. Don't judge me. You got to judge the heart. <laughs> <coughs> okay. <coughs> 1970 legend gave 20 people memberships. Looks like they're all populated now. Uh, wear what you have. I, yeah, I just don't have nice... I mean, I got nice stuff, but it's workout stuff. I don't know. Um, biz Analyst, Fishing with Camo Joe, Jacob Barnhart, um, 1970 legend is a goat. This is probably a goat. I'll tell you, <clears throat> it's all of us working together make this channel. I mean, I could run the channel, but if nobody shows up, it's just me talking to myself. I've seen channels like that where they get like one view. Like they've done the channel for years. Literally, they do this channel for years. I'm not going to say which one it is. And it's not a crypto channel. And then you, they get like three views. Like years later still, just three to five people watch the show. Anyhow, Richard Reyes, Garfred, Tom Donald, Eric. Escalero, Brad Oxner, Judge Dread, Cody. <clears throat> Happy Easter from London, says Rob Lester. Flip flops and shorts, Hulk. Uh, well, it's a little cold. I live in the mountains in California, so it's like 45 or 50 degrees out. I'll be wearing shorts for sure. I'll wear a nice coat shirt <clears throat> and then fucking a pair of shorts or something. I don't know. I'm sure God will overlook it. Uh, hey, my parents went to Hawaii on a vacation decades ago, and they went to church <clears throat> in Hawaii. Everybody's wearing beach outfits, so it doesn't matter what you wear. It matters. It matters what your heart is. That's what it's all about in anything you do, a job, marriage, whatever. If you're a boxer, if you don't have heart, you know, Gintaras, uh, bl bloppity blop, <clears throat> we are slaves, Mara, FYB, Rugs McFly, Gringo in Florida, Pac, Paca Sad, be a rebel, like that one, I agree with that, definitely be a rebel, don't follow the crowd, do what you think is right, <clears throat> base it on principles, I mean, not everybody can do what they think's right. You got to have the right principles in your life and the standards based on something higher than you. And then you do what you think is right. Because if, if I were to just say, do what you think is right, well, everybody has their own definition of right. So that's where standards come in. Uh, rare field tennis, Chad Berry. Jesus does not care. Sunny wait, from sunny Costa Rica says Eric Goldsmith. <clears throat> Anyhow, I just read off the 1970 legend. The recruitment office gave 20 people memberships. That'll be it. 
Eric Goldsmith says, Easter blessings to all. Thanks again, Hulk. And that'll be your Easter morning show. Um, and that's for show. <clears throat> so take care. Hang in there. Watch Crypto Hulk for facts and um, direction for what's going to happen in the future. I've already shown you what's happening in the past with all the connections. Now I'm showing you how all that stuff from the past why does Crypto Hulk show us all this stuff from the past? Well, maybe, asshole, if you were to look, <clears throat> uh, Turkey from 10 years ago was a rippled partner I just showed you. Five months ago, they get Financial Action Task Force approved and shit. And then just recently, like in the past, whatever, week or something, they get their own money. So maybe that's the fuck the reason why I show all that stuff from 10 years ago, right? Oh, yeah, Crypto Hulk. You're right. <laughs> I'm sorry I'm such a dumb fuck. That's it's not my fault. It's my parents' genetics. Alrighty then. <clears throat> I might make a show tonight. I don't know. I doubt it. Um definitely the morning show tomorrow. Um I've got a lot of stuff going on today. The gym's closed where I'm at, so I gotta drive an hour to Sacramento <clears throat> to uh go work out and shit and then by the time again, I, I doubt I'll be making a show tonight. So, anyhow, take care and uh, happy Easter to those that believe in that. And I'll see you all in my next program.